Hello and welcome. Mr. Martino here for your favorite teacher. In this lesson, we're going to talk about converting metric units for length, area, and volume. This topic will usually be embedded within our other types of questions, but is still very important to understand and be able to apply as it has real world implications no matter what you end up doing. In a previous lesson on conversion of metric units, we established the different units that we use to measure quantities, such as mass, lengths, and volumes. Those measurements highlighted what type of unit we would use depending on the size of the measurement. We will attempt to build on that topic by comparing units for lengths, areas, and volumes. But in this case, the volume measurements will reflect a measure that is based on meters cubed or centimeters cubed. As we know, metric units of length are based on a meter base, whether it is fractions of a meter or multiples of a meter. We can therefore link the different units together by powers of 10, depending on which units we are comparing. As an example, a centimeter is one hundredth of a meter and a kilometer is 1,000 meters. So we can see that they are 100 times 1,000 centimeters in a kilometer. When we look at an area of a two-dimensional shape, any comparisons between the lengths is multiplied by each other. In other words, we need to be very careful if we are describing an area in both meters squared or centimeters squared. The tendency for most students is to forget this piece of advice and simply use the one-dimensional length conversion to provide an answer. Let's take a look at an example. We have a rectangular shape with sides 2.6 meters and 1.3 meters. The area of this shape is 3.38 meters squared. If we were asked to provide the units as centimeters squared, many students get lazy and think to themselves, meters to centimeters is times 100. So the answer should be 3.38 times 100 or 338 centimeters squared. Can you work out why their reasoning is flawed? Their reasoning is flawed because the student has not realized we are multiplying two lengths together and therefore the conversion from meters to centimeters is being multiplied by itself, twice. Looking at it in a different way, 2.6 meters is 260 centimeters, and 1.3 meters is 130 centimeters. When we multiply those two numbers together, our answer is 33,800. The conversion for each separate length has itself being multiplied in the calculation. This means that for areas, 10,000 centimeters squared is equivalent to one meter squared. Although we have previously presented volumes as measured in liters, we can also represent volumes as a length cubed, because for many shapes, that is how we actually will find a volume. This has already been demonstrated in our lesson on the calculation of volumes. Hence, we can take a similar principle that we've just done with areas and apply it to volumes. A volume is calculated by multiplying three lengths all together. This has the effect of cubing the conversion factor if we are converting from meters to centimeters. Let's take a look at an example and see if you can guess the answer from intuition. A box has arrived at your house and its dimensions are one meter all around. In other words, a big cube. It was sent by mistake and was supposed to go to a dice manufacturer because it's filled with little cubes, each one centimeter cubed. How many of those little cubes do you think are in that box? If I ask my students this question, the usual answers vary between a thousand and a hundred thousand, sir. Somebody might even say 300,000, which could never be right. 
The actual answer is one million. Each dimension in the little cubes is 100 centimeters in length, and the volume is 100 times 100 times another 100. One million little cubes. Hard to believe, I know, but correct. The lesson to be learned here is be very careful when converting volumes or areas to smaller or bigger units. Put another way, how many little squares, each a centimeter on all sides, can we fit into a big square that is one meter on all sides? If you think about it a bit, I'm sure you'll realize that there are a hundred rows of a hundred columns, or 10,000 in all. I hope this has been helpful and you can always test your understanding by taking our quizzes or trying our worksheets available on the website. This has been Mr. Martino for your favorite teacher and thanks for watching.